A Hyderabad-based startup called Stardower has successfully tested India's first hydrogen oxygen propulsion engine, and they did it all here in India from scratch. The test took place at ISC in Bengaluru, and it's a major step forward in India's private space sector. Welcome to our weekly Indian startup news show. I'm Caleb Friesen, your host, and you're watching Backstage with Millionaires. And before we jump into it, this channel is part of the Zero One Network. Now, in case you're like me and you're wondering what's so special about a hydrogen oxygen engine, well, I'll break it down for you. For starters, it's one of the cleanest propulsion systems out there. When hydrogen burns with oxygen, the only byproduct is water vapor. There's no toxic exhaust, no harmful chemicals, and that's what makes it ideal for reusable rockets and long distance space missions. But it isn't just clean, it's also incredibly efficient as well. Hydrogen oxygen engines deliver more thrust for every kilogram of fuel. That's a pretty big deal when you're trying to launch heavy payloads into space. Less fuel means less weight, and that can lead to serious cost savings over time. But here's the catch. These kinds of engines are actually pretty difficult to deal with. Hydrogen needs to be stored at incredibly low temperatures, around minus 253 degrees Celsius, and it takes up a lot of volume too. That's actually one of the main reasons why companies like SpaceX don't use it. But still, Stardower is betting on the long-term benefits of this kind of engine. Yes, the hydrogen-oxygen engines are more complex and expensive to develop at first, but they can offer lower operating costs, better performance, and fewer environmental downsides in the long run. And that's exactly the direction that this company is headed in. They're currently building Lucas, a next generation orbital transfer vehicle designed to carry payloads across low Earth orbit, geostationary orbit, and even to the moon and Mars. And their first launch is scheduled for the third quarter of 2027. All right, now moving on to the next news item here, but continuing to talk about Hyderabad based startups, we have Goruda Aerospace, a drone company that has secured an export license. And what this means is that they can now officially supply drones to international markets, including the United States, Australia, and countries across the Middle East. So what exactly are they exporting? Well, Garuda's main focus will be on its agriculture-specific drone called the Garuda Kisan. The drone helps farmers with precision farming, things like crop scouting, spraying treatments, irrigation, and even real-time data to support smarter decisions. And in the United States and Australia, they'll focus on agriculture, but in the Middle East, Garuda Garuda's drones will serve a different role, security and surveillance. The company isn't new to international activity either. Last year, they partnered with a Sri Lankan agritech firm to start operations there as well. And so now with this license, they're looking to seriously expand their global footprint. And Garuda's founder, Agnishwar Jayaprakash, said that this is a monumental step in their journey to becoming a global drone operator. He says that it's all about diversifying revenue beyond India and getting a first mover advantage in emerging drone markets. All right, next up in the news, Astra, the AI startup that wanted to be the chief of staff for every account executive has shut down just four months after raising funds from Perplexity AI's founder, Arvind Srinivas. Now, before I talk about what happened here, it's important to understand what exactly Astra was trying to build. The company was developing an AI-powered tool to help sales teams close deals faster. And so it would automate tasks like lead tracking, sales conversation analysis, and deal execution. The idea was to take care of 80% of an account executive's workload so that they could focus on actually selling. Astra promised better sales mapping, more visibility into pipelines, and fewer manual updates across tools like Salesforce and Slack. But despite its massive potential, things did not go as planned. In a LinkedIn post, co-founder and CEO Supreet Hegde said that he and his co-founder had different visions for the company's pace of growth, and ultimately they decided to part ways. But internal disagreements weren't the only issue. Supreet also pointed out other roadblocks like a lack of trust from enterprise customers and too much noise in the market. Clients were hesitant to give a young startup access to sensitive platforms like Google Drive, Salesforce, Slack, and contract systems. And with so many AI agents popping up lately, a lot of companies just don't know who or what to trust anymore. And so while AI may be the hottest space right now, it's clear that building something useful and sustainable is a lot Lot harder than it looks. All right, now let's move into some quick news items here. First of all, Blinkit has started piloting 10-minute medicine delivery for prescription medicines in select parts of Bengaluru, including free doctor consultations for orders without valid prescriptions. 
Next up, we have Krutram reportedly laying off over 100 employees, mainly from its linguistics team, in a second round of job cuts, just weeks after a smaller round in June, where they're citing strategic realignment and efforts to streamline operations. After that, we have Amagi Media Labs, which has filed draft papers to raise 1,020 crore rupees through an IPO, which would make it the first Indian company in the broadcast and streaming tech space to go public. And then finally, we have Lenscart, which has filed for an IPO to raise 2,150 crore rupees in fresh capital, targeting an eight to nine billion dollar valuation. All right, next up, just like the last couple of weeks, I asked you all what you had shipped this week, and I got replies from a bunch of people, and so here are the three that I like the most. First of all, we have Kazag.app, built by Fayaz Ahmed. Kazag is a platform that helps you to create and manage invoices. It's built to be super simple and user-friendly, so you can quickly generate professional-looking invoices without any fuss. You can customize them, add client details, and even send them directly from the platform. After that, we have Ploton.ai, built by Hitesh Joshi. It's a visual tool that lets you create and manage automated workflows without writing complicated code, and you can use it to automate automate tasks like handling customer support or processing sales leads. And the best part is that it's fully customizable, so you can adapt it to fit your business as it grows. And then finally, we have OneClick by Sorov Diman. OneClick is a platform built to help freelancers and small businesses manage everything in one place. And so with OneClick, you can handle client management, track projects, assign tasks, and even create and send invoices all from a single dashboard. And it also lets you chat with clients and team members in real time store and share documents securely, and view reports to track how your business is doing. And so you can think of it kind of like an all-in-one workspace so that you can keep your work organized, keep your teams in sync, and your operations running smoothly. All right, now let's move to the funding news segment for today's video. This week, Indian startups raised just $35 million, which is a lot lower than last week's $61 million. It's also below the trend line for the fourth week in a row. So let's take a look at some of the companies that raised funds this week. The first one I wanna talk about here is Fintech Unicorn Navi. They are a fintech super app offering digital loans, investments, insurance, and payments all in a single platform, and they've raised $20 million in debt. After that, we have Bengaluru-based SharpSell.ai. They're an AI platform that helps sales teams to close more deals, and SharpSell is doing this by providing their sales team with ready-to-use and personalized content like one-click proposals, objection handling cards, and dynamic product illustrations that are adapted for each customer, and they've raised 30 crore rupees in their Series A round. Following that, we have a Gen Z-focused fast fashion brand all the way from Koati called Little Box, and they were even featured on Shark Tank India Season 3, where they closed an all-shark deal, and today they've raised $2.1 million. Next, we have Gurugram-based Passport Trips, which is like your personal travel buddy that helps you to plan, book, and manage your trip, everything from finding inspiration to getting support on the go. And you can imagine scrolling Instagram for travel ideas, chatting with locals, juggling multiple booking sites all separately, but with Passport, it's all happening in one place. Their app uses AI and real traveler data to suggest hidden gems, flexible itineraries, stays, activities, and local transport, and they've raised $500,000 in their seed round. And then finally, we have Vadodara-based Genexis Biotech. They are a biotech startup that's making lab-grown proteins and enzymes for industries like pharma, food tech, and skincare, and they've raised four crore rupees, that's about $460,000 dollars in their seed round. All right, that is all the Indian startup news that I have for you all this week. I really hope you enjoyed the video. I'm Caleb Friesen, and this has been Backstage with Millionaires. I'll catch you in the next one.